Welcome to 412 Sports Talk, the number one podcast for Pittsburgh sports. Steelers, we talk it. Penguins, we talk it. Pirates, yeah, we talk it. With the biggest guests, Bob Pompiani, Pittsburgh legend. Mayor Bill Peduto, the mayor of the city of Pittsburgh, is on with us. Doran Dickerson, West Allegheny legend. Trey Essex, welcome. Available on iTunes and Spotify. Hosted by Mad Chad Nolan. Get out for too much. Well, now he's not turning it over at all. And Eddie Provident. We've got the best team in football. And now, 412 Sports Talk. All right, well, welcome back to another episode of the 412 Sports Talk podcast brought to you as always by MCM Studios. As always, I'm your host, Eddie Provident, and with me is my man, Mad Chad. And you'll see, we're just getting right into it this week with the interviews. We've got the one and only Jordan DeFigio from Twitter, from the <laughs> Yinzers podcast, from the Helmet Hair podcast. And uh, man, the Yinzers podcast just absolutely killed it on their first episode. So we had to get Jordan on to talk about it. And uh, we're really, really thankful that you're here how you doing jordan i'm good thanks for having me yeah it's been a, it's been a crazy week for sure it's my <laughs> life took a turn that i was not expecting it to but it's it's been wild and uh, honestly the team that we have over at yinzers is probably just like the just such it's such a yeah. solid group of people and uh, it's been awesome to ride this wave with them who was the brainchild behind that so Morgan and Sam and I all write for SteelerNation.com right. and Justin McGonigal runs it. So he he texted all of us. We're the the three female writers for the site. Definitely. It was probably back before the holidays. I feel like it was a long time ago that he first put this idea on our radar. Mm-hmm. And so a couple weeks ago, maybe two three weeks ago that was when he reached out again and said i really want to do this i think we need to move forward with it and then i'm pretty sure sam was the one who came up with the name for it and then justin started doing all the legwork putting feelers out to people for interviews and episodes and stuff and it really just took off it was wild well all three of you are knowledgeable as hell um, all three of you are engaging as hell. And I, the first episode, if, if you haven't watched it yet, um, you can catch it on YouTube. Uh, you can also, I'm assuming you're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. So if you don't, if you're not a watching kind of person, you can absolutely listen to it. Um, but I, I mean, I can't recommend the podcast enough. When I got a chance to hop on and watch it, I didn't get to watch it live. But the next day I hopped on and the YouTube channel, the YouTube video, it already had 1500 views and I don't even think it was up a full 24 hours. So, uh, I mean, we were excited about like a hundred listens on our first episode and you yeah. guys, <laughs> 1500 views on episode one. Um, you guys did a great job with it and I know there's going to be tons of stuff to come. So, um, good stuff on that. And I want to jump right in. Like, so give me what goes through your head when you're sitting there talking to Juju's mom <laughs> And then all of a sudden just Juju comes out of nowhere. <laughs> like what, well, what goes through your head when he yeah. hops on the podcast? So more Morgan and Sam and I did a podcast with uh striker, the guy who does the Steeler nation podcast back mm-hmm. on Monday. And Morgan mentioned that she and I got on the call with Sammy a little bit early and Juju popped on then. So this was before we started recording and that that was whenever I was like, Oh shit. Like (laughs) I, I was not expecting him to be there because he is an adult and has his own place. (laughs) So it, it was just like he, and it, the thought crossed my mind just very haphazardly, like at at one point during the day. And I thought, no, that's not going to happen. He's not going to show up. He might, no, he won't. So whenever he actually did show up, I just, I, I couldn't even believe it. And I, I just had had to keep telling myself, stay calm, just be cool. Don't scare them <laughs> away. Don't just make, just talk in a way that makes sense. You're good. Just breathe. And then whenever, uh, he came back on, it was like, I can't, this is just not, this doesn't make sense. How is this real? No, you kept your cool better than I would. That's for sure. <laughs> Did you guys like, was any part of planning the podcast as well? Like what my thoughts was, was like, yeah, an all female knowledgeable podcast 
is was kind of needed because mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. people on people i know you follow me on we follow each other on twitter everybody complains about the local sports media yeah. which is why kind of eddie and i you know i used to blog back in the day and do podcasts and i kind of got out of it and then i'm back in it now and the big reason why was like well if i'm gonna sit here and complain about the product that's that's available to Pittsburgh sports fans. Let me let. How about I put my money where my mouth is and do something about it and say, here, here's a different opinion, a different thing that's maybe different from what's on the local radio and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And then, but there, there's other people doing that as well. But you guys have something original, which is three strong independent female uh, females that are or they're hosting a show about sports. So was that kind of uh, you know did you did that cross your guys' mind at all? Yes, that's exactly why we we wanted to do it and i th- i wouldn't even discredit anybody else who has gotten into the sports journalism sure. podcast world if if your goal is to provide something to people that they can't get from publications and radio jockeys and stuff like those ass hat personalities <laughs> then that in itself is original enough. Mm-hmm. I, I th- and I I think that uh, an all female fronted and hosted podcast is huge and really necessary. But I th- I think that uh, there are two sides of the same coin. Like people want fresh voices, yes. and it gets it gets old listening to the same people drone on and on and on, and they have a very limited script to work with based on what they are told they can and can't say. So Mm. it, it's refreshing to listen to anybody who can, can speak knowledgeably about the, the Pittsburgh sports teams while also not really having to filter what they say through a higher, the powers that be, I guess. So, yeah, and, and as someone that you know, as we host a, a podcast, and there's around around the four one two, and there's a, there's a bunch of other things why we like to collab because um, I, I was and I think you saw what I was talking about the other day where someone got a little irritated because you know people people retweet my stuff and they're like this is the best podcast I've ever listened to, and then I've had people also say your podcast is shit. <laughs> it's like okay, yeah, that's fair. But like the cool thing about that is why I like collabing with with other people is. You might not like mine, but mm-hmm. you might like Yin's hers. You might like a round of 412, but you might not like Yin's hers. And if anything, mm-hmm. more content and more good content for Pittsburgh sports fans is, if anything, it's just listener friendly because there's going to be something for everybody. Right. It's the same kind of thing like music. Yeah. You you could find somebody who loves a band and hates another band and then find somebody who the exact opposite. Like not every single thing is going to speak to every single person in the same way. And that's why it's always good when there's more content out there. Hell, there are probably going to be people who listen to Yinzers and love it and listen to helmet hair and hate it. Like it, it all Mm -hmm. just depends on the, what, what you're looking for and the kind of content that you want. And I, yeah, I think it's great. And the uh, the diversity even in the just pittsburgh is incredible and i i personally love collabing as well because it it opens up dialogue and opportunities to you know hear from other people and talk to other people yeah definitely yeah so uh my my camera or my light battery just died so we'll keep going that's fine um i'll I'll get that i'll get that in a second when we'll ask a question and when someone's talking i'll i'll flip that over but uh the the thing i wanted to to mention to you was the the backlash you guys are getting Mm -hmm. um specifically from a couple of local idiots we'll call them (laughs) um who are calling that like or this isn't new the fact that you guys had juju on the show mm. and the fact that juju said that hey i, I want to be a stealer i want to retire as a stealer that's my legacy um and you know one of them saying oh well that's just juju saying that so that he's not the bad guy like mm-hmm. um how do you so that's your first episode you've made that kind yeah. of impact i mean i've seen uh i've seen that quote from juju on tmz i've seen it from you know local news i've seen it national news how do you handle that in your i mean obviously you have the the helmet hair podcast that you've been doing for a while so you have a little Mm -hmm. bit you've all been writing so you have a little bit of um 
you know, knowledge and a little, not a little bit, a lot of knowledge um, going into this. So it's not like you guys are rookies, but how do you handle that on the first episode of a podcast? And all of a sudden you're like, bam, you're like smack dab in the national media, not even just yeah. the local media. It was very unexpected. So I, my, my, the way that I've kind of been approaching it is okay. So I'm seeing a very, convoluted argument being made there are people who who started off by saying okay well that's not news to then saying well he didn't mean it so my my question is what are what are people trying to argue and what are they trying to discredit are they trying to say that we didn't break this news or are they trying to say that juju was just blowing smoke because that can be true. Maybe Juju was just saying that. We'll never know what his motive is until he signs or doesn't sign or goes somewhere else. Even then we might not know. But the the people who were saying that it wasn't breaking news, he he told us himself on the podcast that he had not said that anywhere yet. So I think it was people, I was just trying to, to diffuse a couple things by saying, well, you're not actually, what are you arguing? What are you trying to say here? Like that it's not news or that he didn't mean it. And as, as far as the, the personality that started the, the whole debacle, <laughs> I, I refuse to even say his name on Twitter. Don't worry, he's not a friend of the show. <laughs> yeah, like, I just, I don't want to give him that attention because that's what that's what he wants, that's what he's after. He, he'll say 10 things that contradict all of the other nine things that he just said. Like, it, and just for the sake of people retweeting and calling him stupid or, like, he, all he wants is people to come after him. Well, not so to mention I, that he's also yeah. upset that you guys got Juju on your show mm -hmm. and he Juju would never do his show. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder why. Yeah. Like, yeah. Maybe don't be and, such a dick and people will want to come on your show. Like that's the whole thing the is thought. um I was talk I was talking to Dejan Kavakovich and he's he's a friend of the show. He comes on here and uh you know the other day he was talking about podcasts and he retweets our podcast and a bunch of others and and that's the difference in mindsets is one feels threatened that they're not, they're not mm -hmm. the one that broke that story. They're not the one that had that guest. And then there's people like us and like Dejan who let's just build everybody up because if I build you up and then one day I have a yeah. great show or something and you build me up, we're, it's, that's, a, that's how the community grows. There, no one should feel threatened because everybody's going to have that show or that breakthrough or that, or that, Oh mm -hmm. man, I wish I would have had that guest or I wish I would have did this. And if you, if, if you just keep it positive and go, Hey, that's cool. How'd you get that guest? Well, then maybe I can, you know, learn from yeah. that. And then I can pull a guest for our show or I can have a segment on, on my show that, that kind of is on that same level. Um, so uh, yeah, I would not take any of that negative energy. Uh, I mean, just, just brush that off yep. because and, that's what it is. And honestly, mm -hmm. for me, like I said this last night, I mean, watching you guys do what you guys do, watching, you know, uh, listening to um, around the 412, uh, you know, listening to Hunter with uh, Locked on Penguins, like all of these, like all of these creators in the Pittsburgh area, they make me want to be better at what I do. You know, Absolutely. they make me want to step my game yep. up. Like I, I message I, Eddie. I'm like, dude, we need to do, we need to yeah. do this better. We need to do this better. We need to do this like, better. My, and instead my, of me going, your podcast sucks because I didn't, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like. No, yeah. like, hey, Eddie, we need to step our game up because yeah. there's some other good podcasts out there. Yeah, like, I, you know, when I saw that you guys had the 1,500 views in less than a day, I was like, that, well, that wasn't like what we, we didn't get that into our seventh them. or eighth episode. Honestly. It was like, okay, yeah. what are they what are they doing better than me mm -hmm. that I could be, that I can improve on? Like, that. that's kind of how I look at it. Yeah. I mean, on it, if I'm being honest, you guys like, are doing still, a lot, but yeah. <laughs> um, let's let's talk. No, let's yeah, let's, let's get hockey. Let's sports. let's talk some hockey. Hold on, hold on. Oh. I want to get her thoughts because Ben Ben's coming back. That's right. <laughs> Ben's coming back. We know this. Eddie was kind of on the uh, side I'll, of. I'll be the bad guy. <laughs> yeah, he was. Okay. Well, uh, you might not. And some people, I'm always the bad guy. Trust me, Eddie. Listen, <laughs> <laughs> I'm always the bad guy. But I I wanted Ben to come back because mm -hmm. I feel like he still gives them the best chance to win based on any other possible QB they could have. 
and I felt like him going out in front of zero fans in that weird season, I think he deserved a little bit better than that. Where are you on it? I believe that what we saw from Ben last year was it contained a lot more positives than negatives down towards the end of the season that that last little stretch there it wasn't just him who was making mistakes mm-hmm. and playing b- beneath his capability it was it was so many different things and the the big one i think was was not so much what he could do but what they were doing with where he was i think with the play calling which was atrocious and the offensive line was doing him no favors Mm -hmm. and they it could have just been this really vicious cycle of the offensive line can't protect him enough for them to get creative with play calling so they're just going to keep going with this dink and dunk quick release type offensive strategy and having randy finkner calling your plays or having any type of hand in the offense whatsoever is never going to be a good thing in my opinion, but the defense started struggling late in the season too. We saw them regress a little bit with all the injuries, injuries and, yeah. and the COVID stuff. It, it was just, it turned into a nightmare really fast. However, the nightmare still ended with us sitting at, 12 and four as opposed to eight and eight the previous season with who is Mm -hmm. by all accounts Ben's successor and obviously he got hurt too so it was just a weird season but I think that if if they're willing to commit to put the type of guys around Ben that would put him in a place where he can succeed and play well based on where he is at this point in his career I would still take him over Mason Rudolph and, and maybe like, maybe we'll see Dwayne Haskins do well. I don't know. The jury will be out on him until he goes out there and we see what he can do. But I, if they're still committed to trying to win a Super Bowl now, I don't think testing the waters with a quarterback who's completely new to the team as of this year is the way to, to go after it. Yeah. I, I agree with everything you said. I guess I have a, a different opinion on it all. Mm. I, I How think, dare you? Yeah, I I think that Ben is absolutely the best chance to win next year, next season. I don't. I think that if you were to try to make an argument different than that, you probably don't know a lot about this football team. Mm-hmm. Um, I, however, after watching the Super Bowl, I don't care if we have Patrick Mahomes back there throwing the ball. Yeah. If this offensive line and this running game doesn't get fixed, which is exactly what you just talked about, I don't care who's back there at quarterback. There, it's going to be a it's going to be a, a rough season, and that mm-hmm. offensive line was trash, especially down the stretch. The which I think had more of an effect on the running game than the actual running backs. Yeah, but I don't think any of those three running. And I love James Conner. I was a big Benny Snell fan when we when we drafted him. I don't think either of them, and I don't think that McFarland is, are none of those guys are a a bell cow back where you right. can you can feed them the rock 25, 30 times a game and 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 know what you're going to get. They're not even a great running back by committee. Mm-hmm. So for me, my concern is what does this deal for what does this salary structure look like for Ben? Because if we're kicking the can down the road another year or two. And we're just going to have more dead cap money mm. on years where because of the, the impact of COVID, the salary cap probably isn't going to be going up the next couple of years very much. That worries me. And that kind of sets this team up for failure. I would rather see them try to cut ties with Ben gracefully, go into next year with Mason Rudolph, Dwayne Haskins, and maybe Josh Dobbs and just this team will never do it. I'm, this is what I would like. Mm. Know that you're probably going to be a seven and nine football team at best. Get a good draft pick and go after your quarterback of the future that way. 
Mm. This team will never do that. They've never they've never not submitted the to way. defeat. It's not the Steeler way. So I know what I'm saying is not reality. That's what <laughs> I would like to see. So the reality side of me is like, yeah, Ben gives us the best chance to win. They're probably a 10 or 11 win team with Ben next year. If they, you know, if they fix the offensive line and get a good, get a competent running back. But outside of that, I mean, I, you know, I, I don't like the defense is really going to have to steal a lot of games if they don't fix the offensive well, line in the running what, yeah. situation. Here's what all three of us can agree with is no, even if Ben wasn't going to come back and now he is coming back, the running game and the offensive line. Yeah had to be fixed whether he was coming back or not because even if he wasn't coming back what now you're going to have a less experienced quarterback mm -hmm. with a with a below right. average run game and a below average he, offense it better line. be a you're mobile quarterback for failure too yeah at least ben is good enough to overcome that i mean for whatever people say mm -hmm. he threw for 33 touchdown passes yeah i'll be honest with you if the offensive line looks at all like it did last year i'd rather have dobbs back there at quarterback because so at least yeah. he could run around. Yeah. At least he right. could run around a little bit. But he's not going to get you to a 10 win football team. He, there's no way in the world. I like Josh Dobbs, but there's no way he's a playoff quarterback. So and that's Jordan, the problem. You're in the you're looking at the draft. What 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 would your biggest need be? Like your two biggest needs in the draft? Mm. Offensive line is my number one. Okay. I think yeah. that they I don't necessarily think they need mm -hmm. to go all in with their first pick mm -hmm. because I, I I lean more to the side of they they got Kevin Dotson in the fourth round mm -hmm. yeah. and he wasn't even invited to the combine. So right. and this draft is supposed to be very uh very uh, deep, deep deep when mm -hmm. it comes to line. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know much about draft stuff like analysis and mock stuff. I don't mm -hmm. I don't typically pay too much attention to that, but from what I've heard, the the draft is super deep on on the line. And I would say, honestly, it, it all depends on who's still available in the first round. Because if there's some – pick 24 with, with all of the needs that they have, you just never know. It's up in the air. Mm -hmm. They could – a really good running back could fall to them at 24. Ajay Harris, uh, please. Yeah. I wouldn't <laughs> – I know a lot of people rip into – to people who have opinions about Najee Harris and drafting him first, but if he, he's, if he's available at 24, yep. How could you say now? Nah, yep. We know that our run game is an issue, but we'll pass on him. On the best running ben. back in the draft. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On a game, possible I'm with you. Game I'm with you. I'm with you there. Yeah. Someone yeah, that Ben, I, that Ben could literally just dump the ball off to and just say, Hey, go, go make a play. You know? Yeah. I'll, I, yeah. No, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. Finish no, you're your, good. Okay. My I, honestly, the other thing I would say, if they go offensive lineman in the first round, if Travis Etienne is there in the second round, I, I wouldn't mind taking a look at him. I, I actually, I really like Travis Etienne a lot. Um, Either way, I don't I think know, it's O line, running yeah, back. It's O line and running back, though. In yeah, the first two rounds for me, like that's where I'm at. Yep. I don't know. Where yeah, you guys are at. I think they need a tight end too, actually. Yes, because they they lost a really good blocking tight end, yeah. in Vance mm -hmm. McDonald, Ebron's and I don't think Ebron good, is but that. He can't block worth a damn. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah. here, here's one I want to throw at both of you. Um, I put this on Twitter a little bit ago. I was watching the NFL Network earlier today. I had Charlie Casherly on, which I don't. I take everything that Charlie Casherly says with a grain of salt. I don't really yeah. think he. I don't really think he's what he's cracked up to be. But he had Justin Fields falling to the Steelers at 24. I saw that. Now I don't surprising. see. I don't see any way that happens because <laughs> I, I think all four quarterbacks will be gone by pick fifteen. On yeah. the off chance that Casserly is right, if if Fields is there, do you? I mean, I, if Fields is there, I don't see how you don't take him. Yeah, no, you take him. Right, like you just you go quarterback yeah. and let him spend a year under Ben and any and, of the top four quarterbacks. Yeah, if Trey somehow Lance, they're Justin there, Fields, yeah. Jack Wilson, Trevor Lawrence, that's not going to happen. So ever, but. if okay, so so then let's. <laughs> If, if if Fields is available at pick 20, do you trade up if you're the Steelers? Ooh. Uh, so just knowing what I know about the QB class next year, which I don't know. Our next guest, Nick, Nick Fairboss, said that it's good, but I I don't, I don't know any names. Like, yeah, there's I not anyone that, like, wows me. This year, Fields just – that. that if it's if he goes past 16, you probably wouldn't need to give up that much to get him right. 
as as compared. I mean, you, here's here's my look at it. You traded up in the first round to draft an inside linebacker. So if yeah. you're going to do that, yep. then you should probably do it to try to get a chance to have a real franchise QB. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. where I would. Say. I think they would if they yeah. if they see an opportunity to like look. At, I've I've said this multiple times over the last couple of weeks, but look at how long we we went without a franchise QB in oh between Terry Bradshaw and Ben Roethlisberger. Yeah. Like we had, we had decent quarterbacks, but none of them were that. And if they, <laughs> if they really believed that Justin Fields could be their guy for the next 15 years, like you jump, yep. like Ben, you, you would do it. And they, and that's the thing I like about Kevin Colbert is that when he wants a guy he gets the guy yeah. and you mentioned he, they did it for Devin Bush and they mm-hmm. did it with Minka Fitzpatrick. And I, I think that if they have their sights set on Justin Fields and he's still available at the 15, 20 pick range, then I can't see what would, unless the asking price was insanely right. high to trade up. I can't see him not going for it. If if they determine that he's their that's guy. their guy, yeah. I think yeah. we all agree though that that Casserly's out of his mind on that one, right? Like, there's, yeah, there's no, no way he falls to twenty. I, I'm yeah, even there's no Matt way Jones getting ma- mocked yeah. in the top fifteen now. I, I think all the QBs are gone by, by yeah, 15, yeah, sixteen. So let's uh, let's change it up a little bit. Let's talk some hockey. Yes, some good oh, hockey amen. Talk going. All right, <laughs> um, man, this turnaround with the Penguins. I, I mean, in what do you? World. What is going on with it, man? Like, dude, Jari, they got new brass Jari's, and- Jari's back to All Star Jari, as you've said. Like, this has been unreal. It's, it's crazy what what good mm-hmm. goaltending and special teams will do for yeah. a hockey team. Their power play. It's like they they had some type of like re- reincarnation of like 2016, 2017. Mm-hmm. It was it and it switched on a dime. It was insane. Yeah. Like they were, they were terrible, 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 terrible. Good. All of a sudden. And it started with that empty, the, when they pulled the goalie against, uh, the Islanders Islanders. with 18 seconds left when Malcolm scored. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was when I first noticed the difference and it's, it's not, obviously it's not a power play, but it's a man advantage. And the way they were moving the puck, I was like, wait a minute. What, what is this? (laughs) Where where did they learn to do that? Cause they haven't been doing that. And then, Watching that game against the Capitals on Tuesday, their their first power play, unreal. Yeah. The, and Even when they're, they're not scoring, they're it, mm-hmm. you know, you're like that power play was pretty good. Yeah. And and I'll tell you another thing that really impressed me and encouraged me was so what was it? Whatever night Kapanen got benched in the third period. And mm, Sullivan, did, yeah, Sullivan Saturday. didn't pull any punches about it. They asked him in the post game uh, presser uh, what happened with Kapanen, and he said, I, th- "I think his exact quote was something along the lines of he he wasn't bringing it tonight. Cappy didn't have his mm-hmm. best game." And, and how did he answer the bell? Exactly. He he. How did he answer? He came back with an excellent game. wasn't perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but he played a great game, mm-hmm. and he scored the game winner in overtime. And and that yeah. was a that dish from Bluger. And that shot, or yeah, that was Bluger, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That dish from mm-hmm. Bluger and that shot, man. That like you could see Kapanen's eyes were wide open, man. That was. <laughs> yeah. And I I love seeing that from from guys that we mm-hmm. need to step up. It's not always going to be, and we've always said this about this hockey team since Gino and Sid and Latang were, you know, came on the scene. We need the secondary scoring to be there, and to have guys like Bluger and have guys like Kapanen. I know he's a you know, a uh, top six forward, but to have him produce, especially mm-hmm. with Zucker, with Zucker being down, we're going to need that moving forward. And that was really encouraging to see him respond to Sullivan that way. What was even more encouraging to me was that Sullivan put him back in because yeah. a lot of times that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, there, there's a, a pretty consistent complaint about Sully that he, he'll just pull guys out and never, Never give them a chance again. Yeah, once you're in and, that doghouse, there ain't no coming out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he, it was almost like he he knew that that was exactly what Cappy needed to to spark his play and get him to to elevate his performance, and he did. And dang, yeah, he he had himself. And you like you said, it wasn't perfect. He yep. he 
struggled at times in that game on Tuesday, but it doesn't get much better than scoring the game winning goal. And that was exactly what we needed, especially, um, you know, when a player goes down like that, Mm -hmm. you, you do want to see them win even more for that guy. How do you see, uh, the, the Zucker injury affecting the team. Well, Zach Aston you know, Reese is going to play in his place tonight. Mm-hmm. I think I think Aston Reese will do well. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm curious to see. I know McCann is improving day by day, and he was in a he was wearing a regular yeah, jersey. Yeah, he was full contact. Yeah, he'll probably yeah. be back next game, I'd imagine. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm I'm really. Wonder, like I could even see them, uh, but this this is unrelated to Zucker. Uh, like now that Teddy Bluger has emerged at the, as this like phenomenal uh, third line center that the the exact third line center they've been looking yeah. for since they traded for Derek Broussard, like that's he he better not lose that spot to Jared McCann. No, so God, no. like. Maybe maybe they put McCann on the fourth was, line yeah. and finally take off Jankowski and see if he can get something going with Sevier and uh, Lafferty. Maybe I don't know, but I think I the like Zucker Lafferty. injury is yeah he's he's tough. Yeah, that, like, what he did to Chara the other night was uh, <laughs> was beautiful. It was so great, it was beautiful. Teddy oh. Bluger it has definitely become the X factor. I, I don't mind admitting mm-hmm. when I'm wrong, and I never saw him at more than anything other than a serviceable fourth liner. But you know, I was I was I tweeted out some 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 metrics that I was working with yesterday, and like he's on pace. If we were playing an 82 game season, he's on pace to have 50 points, which he might level off at some point. But even 35 plus is usually uh, you know a decent for a third line center, and also his two way play. Um, is is just you can't say enough about it. Mm-hmm. So that kind of answered their question because that was probably their yep. biggest need was they needed a third line center. Mm-hmm. And now I'm starting. Here comes op- the optimism comes right back quickly. I'm like, well, man, if they just go out and get another like top nine winger, like all of a sudden I'm starting to really like this lineup. Yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. and it 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 changed really quick because. Yeah towards the end of well it was like as soon as Hextall and Burke came in that was when they started doing really well but well so yeah. we had Steve Mears on uh that week and he said that the, the I mean the most jarring thing anyone's ever said on the show was the day that Hextall and Burke came in that was the first they had an optional skate that day mm-hmm. and it was the first time all season that every single player was at the optional skate. <laughs> Dang. Yep. yep. <laughs> That'll do it when you know when you don't know if your job is safe. Exactly. And it's guys like Hextall and Burke who don't mind shaking. And also mm-hmm. Zach Aston Reese gave this team a huge spot. Yeah, he did. Yes. He, he is did. so underrated. His mm-hmm. he might be one of the best defensive forwards in the league. His forecheck. Yeah, Aston is Reese for Selkie needs to be a thing, man. Because yes. yeah, he he does not get the credit he deserves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, the minute he came in the lineup, this team was just like, we're playing defense now all day. Well, he what did he have like four points in the first three games? He was back, some mm-hmm. insane three goals in More three games. More insane than yeah. that. The that line in the first two games he was back outshot their opponents like fifteen to one, five on five, like just absurd just literally not even letting the other team breathe. And when you have that third line that can do that, now the Knights that Crosby, because Crosby and Malkin, especially at their ages now, they're not going to have these three or four point nights all the time. Mm-hmm. So you need your third line to contribute. Yeah. <laughs> like you just have to have it. Uh, and, and, you know, so yeah, Zach Aston Reese to me, I, I think he might be one of the most underrated players in the league at this point. He's that. Yeah. I agree with that. Jordan, another thing I wanted to talk to you about uh, was was Sid coming off of his mm-hmm. thousandth game. Um, I, I really wanted to get your opinion on this because right now in the league, we're, we're looking at especially two stars. And uh, I would say, well, you've got the three. You've got McKinnon, Matthews, and, and McDavid. Um, mm-hmm. But what we're seeing from McDavid and Matthews right now, Matthews had 18 goals in 18 games. Um McDavid's on pace to put up 105 points in the shortened season. And <laughs> it's, it's, it's absolutely absurd, absurd. The reason why I bring that up is because McDavid just scored his 500th point uh, a week or two ago. 
And he did it in the same amount of games that Sid did. And so we see all of these things that McDavid's doing, and we're in awe and we're mesmerized by it. But he's on the same pace that Sid was on. And mm-hmm. so and so we've had a 1,000 games to watch Sid. We've been spoiled beyond belief for decades with, with hockey talent. Yeah. Um, what kind of perspective do you have for Sidney Crosby in the career that we've watched so far? Oh, (laughs) yeah. Let me put you on the spot there. (laughs) Well, yeah, it's, it's something I'll say that I, my most recent episode of helmet here was just all about Sidney Crosby and talking about his career and the stuff that he's accomplished. And I think any, I've, I've never really been an athlete, so I can't, I can't speak on this with total clarity, but I have a feeling that most athletes would say that, especially in hockey, individual accomplishments don't mean as much as winning the Stanley cup. Mm -hmm. And as far as I know, by how old is McDavid? 25, I think 25. Yeah. Okay. 25. So Sidney Crosby had a Stanley cup win at Already. like 21 oh, 24 by the way. 20, 24. Okay. Yeah. Um, and he has three now and mm-hmm. McDavid has none. And you, you do have to take into account the fact that Sid plays for the Penguins and Connor yeah. McDavid yeah. plays for Edmonton. Edmonton really aside, yeah, aside yeah. from Dreisaitl, which is a, another another <laughs> yeah. superstar, but aside from that, they don't have much. <laughs> yeah, the poverty. They don't. But looking looking at how quickly the Penguins turned it around, like they mm-hmm. they weren't really much of anything when they drafted Sid, and oh, then right. three years That's later, why they, yeah. they yeah they were in the Stanley Cup. Mm-hmm. They they lost it, but they were in it, and. I, I don't know. I I think with for all of his awards and all of his um accomplishments, I it's hard to compare the two because they're they're generational talents, both mm-hmm. of them. And you could make arguments for either one why you would choose Sid or Connor in their prime over the other one but I I think that obviously we as Penguins fans have more experience watching Sid and there's just something about the way he plays the game and his awareness of it and his drive and his passion for it not just in how how much he wants to win but how much he gives other people the opportunity Mm -hmm. teammates and kids like kids who want to play hockey he he shows up he gives them like he gives equipment he gives his time to to go to rinks and skate with them and put on these clinics and stuff like i i get i just feel like crosby loves the game more than i've ever seen anyone love the game and he knows the game in and out and his IQ and his hand-eye coordination and his desire to to win is just like through the roof I I've never seen anything like it even even with McDavid for all of his talent like Mm -hmm. there's Sid is just set apart in that Yeah, you brought up the hockey IQ because I I do think that McDavid might be a tad bit more gifted athletically. If mm-hmm. you just watch his speed, it's oh his top goodness. end speed is unreal. It, and how he it, controls the puck at that like speed ever. Yeah. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if he does actually surpass Crosby statistically. Yeah. Uh, as their careers go on, but the two way hockey that Crosby played in the back to back cups and also in the Olympics. Mm-hmm. That that the second I, he gets a lot of love for the golden goal, but if you go back and watch the second time they won the gold, yeah, his two way play and a couple of years ago he he should have been nominated for the selkie. They they won't do it because there's this weird thing in hockey culture where like if you're too good of an offensive player you can't be recognized for the it, it, hockey culture is so dumb sometimes. But he was one yeah. of the best defensive forwards in the league. 
I have yet to see McDavid implant that that two way game. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to see McDavid on a big stage where he's not playing Ottawa eight times a year but, and, and right. scoring seven points. When he plays Boston in a seven game series and it's tight and congested, is he going to be able to go back and forth with Perry, uh, Patrice Bergeron and right. guys like that in a two way game? Until we see that, I can't say that he's a, a better player than Crosby. And, and I, I think my point with that is everybody talks about Sid being the better two-way player and McDavid being the better offensive player. Mm -hmm. But if you look at them where they were at McDavid's point in their career, they're the identical offensive players. Yeah. He's mentioned that in Crosby's McDavid's, prime, he yeah. was, he was McDavid was more of a, injury. right. McDavid was, is definitely more of a goal scorer, but that doesn't mm -hmm. mean that Sid wasn't a good offensive player. Yeah, He's, no. He was a, a play driver and a goal producer. So, yeah. If you're going to say, well, McDavid was the better offensive player, yeah, he's the better sco goal scorer, but I don't think that he's the I, – I wouldn't even say he's a better offensive player than Sid was at that point of Sid's career, especially mm -hmm. when you look at the season that he had before the uh, concussion. He was on a 24-game point streak and on pace for 130 or 140 points that season. Yeah. it's some, It was just absurd. Um, the other thing, and I, and this was another thing I put on Twitter or, uh, You know, when he played his 1,000th game, is when we look at the athletic landscape, Mm -hmm. Just take all of North American sports. In the last 20, 25 years, like this generation of, of, of athletes, there's only two athletes that did it on the personal level where they were involved in their communities. They, you know, they did things for, for like you talked about how, how, how much mm -hmm. he does for kids and how much he does for the game off the ice. Um, there's only two athletes that have done it like that. There's only that have also um, been the best player in their league since they were 18, they were the anointed mm -hmm. next, the next one. And they both took that mantle and ran with it. They won championships and then they won gold medals and did it on an international level. The only two athletes to do that in the last 25 years are LeBron James and Sidney Crosby. And you can mm -hmm. hate them. You can, you can <laughs> not like the way they play. You can not like their personality. That's fine. But you can't take away the fact that from 18 on, even before 18, honestly, for both yeah. of them, they were anointed the next one and they, to this day are still doing it and they're doing yep. it at a high level. And I don't say that lightly in team sports, but to put like it's Sidney Crosby and LeBron James for me uh, of mm -hmm. this generation. Um, you know, Brady wasn't anointed the guy before he, he was right. a sixth round pick, you know, like he, he became he was the an underdog. Yeah. He was an underdog and that's a whole different argument, but these guys took all of the pressure that was on them to be the face of their league at 18 and ran with it and were successful and didn't have any off field, off court, off ice drama to go with it. And they were assets to their communities rather than, you know, drama. And to me, that's, that's the, we can't ask any more of those two guys. Right. So Jordan, before you go, so we talked about Crosby. Mm -hmm. Would you, would he be on your Mount Rushmore of Pittsburgh sports athletes? Is he that? Is he that up there with with Lemieux? Are we all putting Lemieux on there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It depends on how many heads we get. On we Mount only Rushmore. get four. Four. We only four. Get four. Mount Rushmore, the original Mount Rushmore. I don't know if he he would make the cut just yet oh, because man. for me it's Mario. Okay. I'm one for uh, one with you. Art Art the uh, Art let's Rooney just the first. Athletes? Oh, athletes. Coaches. Okay. Yeah, okay. Let's take all the owners and if we're keeping it to well, athletes, man, then I do want to hear that though after we do the athletes because sure, we, sure, were, sure. we were two, you and I were two for two. So yeah. okay, okay. Maybe I'm maybe. <laughs> so I'm wrong. if we're going athletes, Mario, Roberto, two for two. <laughs> I would honestly, if if I'm putting a Steeler up there, I'd probably put Joe Green. Three for three. <laughs> And if it's if we're sticking to athletes, then I would probably put Sid up there. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty much what mine would be. Joe Green, Marilyn Mew, so if it's Crosby, Roberto Clemente. That would if be it's my if it's not athletes, you're putting Art Rooney on. Yes. Over absolutely. Sid. So yeah, yeah be, over Sid. Yeah. Yeah, we're four for four then. Yeah. So, I mean, it's hard athletes, to argue Art Rooney because I mean, mm -hmm. our sports culture would just be non-existent without him at this. Point. Nope. I guess we wouldn't yeah. have it. I guess if it's only athletes, it would be, man, it would be out of it's tough. Yeah. It, <laughs> honestly, I'm going to go like super old school here, but it would uh -oh. be out of Sid and Honus Wagner. Mm. I, I don't know which one of the two. I mean, 
because when we're talking about pirates history, you know, yeah. other than the seventies, I get the, that, but man, I think Crosby. It's out of them too for me. I think Sid's. I think the Pirates would still be relevant here, even without that home run, right? I don't think that home run like saved the. Pirates. Well, that's Mazeroski, I think. Oh yeah, never mind. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm space. But see, out. for me, but even even then, I think that Crosby has. I think his accomplishments and him even being here, uh, because the Penguins probably aren't here if they don't draft Crosby. Right. Oh, so I, you, you I guys probably have a better team. argument with Crosby than I do with Wagner for sure. I just yeah, no, I get it. And there, I, I've heard Wagner. I yeah. mean, I, you know me, I'm biased towards the Penguins. I mean, sure. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, that that could be its own podcast episode, honestly. Yeah. Oh, we can talk the, the about Pittsburgh Mount about. Rushmore. I mean, you you can you can sit down with stats. There's like and charts ten Steelers and, players you can consider because mm-hmm. people you ask people who the best Steelers player is of all time and you get ten different answers. Yeah, yep. it's so, very divisive. I mean well, listen Jordan, I, I, thank you so much for joining us. This was thank you for having me. Awesome. Yeah. Um yeah. we will have it up for uh the it'll listeners. be up tonight. It'll be up tonight. Yeah. And uh, also I don't know did you join the the Discord that we have um with uh around like it's like the Pittsburgh community uh I'm pretty sure I'm on there. Are you on there? Okay, I want to make sure you are. There's a Discord, and for anyone else listening, that uh, is basically like all of the content creators in Pittsburgh. Yeah, uh, we there. all go on there, share our links. That's where we yell stuff. at each other and complain we about what we're other. doing. Eddie's trying to get everybody to <laughs> golfing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna send you the link though. If you're not on there, make sure you join that so that we, you know if you have any new articles or podcasts and stuff, you can post it in there. Okay. Hey, look, man, golf is my excuse to be out in nature and drink. Okay. That's <laughs> um, but yeah, Jordan, it's been awesome talking to you. We'll have to definitely yes. do this again, but uh, you can catch Jordan on the helmet hair podcast. You can catch her on the yins hers podcast with an H yins hers. Um, you can find her on Twitter at fidge Newton, F I D G E N E W T O N. Um, Jordan, it's been awesome. Uh, you you been. guys are Thanks awesome. Yeah, me. you guys are great. I can't wait to see what Yinzers is is going to do in the next couple weeks because you're already turning the Pittsburgh sports landscape on its head. So uh, just keep it up. You guys are doing great. So thank you so much. I had an awesome time. Thank you for having me. Sure. Definitely. Well, one two sports talk family. What's going on? It's your guy Eddie P. Uh, I'm sitting in MCM Studios right now. With our sponsor, my man, Mike Hit. Mike, what's going on, brother? What's up, bro? 402 Sports Talk Podcast, Pittsburgh, PA. What is up? What we're doing is, you know, we've got, we're a local podcast. We talk Pittsburgh sports. We're completely supported by people that are either from Pittsburgh or have ties to Pittsburgh. And even our sponsor, MCM Studios, is over in Allentown in the heart of the city of Pittsburgh. But I wanted to bring you into the studio so you could see what Mike's got going on and you can see a little bit of, uh, you know, what happens behind the scenes here at MCM Studios. Mm -hmm. So Mike, what are you working on right now, man? I'm working with a, a, always a stable of talented artists, whether they're from Pittsburgh, they come to Pittsburgh to come to MCM Studios, they move here from out of town, whatever the case may be, a young, old guy, girl, um, pop, rock, reggae, R&B, trap music. You know, I just work with a lot of guys that need the love and the attention and the direction in order to get their sound and their business together and their their whole artistry, you know, in a position that is the quality and, and the vision that they were looking for. I kind of just help them bring all that together. So they're like, oh... You know, or I would have been lost for the next three years if you wouldn't have said, hey, go do this or sing your song like this or write a song like this or this is a good look for you as an artist. That's really what MCM Studios does and what I have going on is just continually helping artists. If they get famous, they get famous. If they don't, they don't. But just helping them along on this artistic journey so they can look back and it was really it felt like it was worth it. Yes. I know how much it means to be a musician and need that backup. And I'll be honest with you, Mike has been a big, big part of the business side of 412 Sports Talk and how much we've grown as a business too. Helping us with the legal side of things, giving us all the tips that he's learned in 10, 11 years of business. 
So, like I said, I just wanted to get you guys to take a look at the studio, hear it from Mike himself, and uh, just get a little bit of the behind the scenes of one of our sponsors, our first sponsor, MCM Studios. And you can check them out at 412mcmstudios.com. You can check them out on Facebook at MCM Studios Pittsburgh. Uh, check Mike out on Twitter at Mike Hitman with two T's. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's build this Pittsburgh community because uh, there's a lot of cool people, a lot of talented people, and a lot of great things going on in the city. Mike, you got anything else to leave them with? You know, support support the people around you that are doing cool things. If you can see that they're serious and they're dedicated and they're putting the time and they're making the investment in themselves, at least make, at the very minimum, the investment of believing in them. That's what I did for 412 Sports Talk Podcast. That's what I do at the studio with the artists. Just... Look at your life as one big investment, and I really think by doing that, we can all help bring everybody around us up. So there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed this little mini tour. Uh, we'll be back with stuff like this. Uh, in the meantime, again, I'm Eddie Provident. Uh, from Mad Chad Nolan, from my man Mike Hitt, uh, we'll catch you later. Peace. Thanks for listening to 412 Sports Talk. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss an episode. If you like the show, leave us a review. And be sure to tell a friend about your source for all things Pittsburgh sports. Find us on Twitter at MadChad412 and at Eddie underscore P underscore 412.